You know, today we begin Religious Freedom Week. And it begins today and goes through next Monday, the 29th of June. And this year's theme is for the good of all. And the purpose of this important week is to engage all of us in, in prayer and in reflection and in taking action regards uh, religious liberty, both here in this country and abroad. But it's also meant to raise awareness regarding the threats to religious liberty and freedom of conscience. As you and I, as we all answer the call to serve the most vulnerable in society, this is our call. You and Deus Caritas, as Pope Benedict, he wrote this. He said, the church's deepest nature, its deepest nature is expressed in a threefold responsibility. One of proclaiming the word of God, celebrating the sacraments and exercising the ministry of charity. These duties presuppose each other and are inseparable. For the church, charity is not a kind of welfare activity which could equally well be left for others, but it is a part of her nature an indispensable expression of her very being." End of quote. So in reality, it's the very heart of the church. So where the principle of religious liberty is present, the church is able to peaceably fulfill her divine mission. And when the principles of religious liberty are diminished or eroded, or taken away, the church as the body of Christ cannot fulfill the mission for which she has been established. True religious liberty cannot be diminished or limited to what we do in church, but is the freedom, the freedom to provide for the common good in accord with what we believe. Friends, this is what we are fighting for in our culture today. To be Catholic and to be American should not mean having to choose one over the other. Our allegiances are distinct, but they need not be contradictory and they should not instead be complementary. This is the teaching of our common faith, which obliges us to work together with our fellow citizens for the common good of all who live in this land. This was the vision of our founding fathers, and this is the vision, was the vision of our, is the vision of our Constitution, which guarantees citizens of all faiths the right to contribute to the common good or the common life together. In fact, religious liberty is indeed the first liberty. It is founded upon the intrinsic dignity of the human person, it is intrinsic to who we are as having been created in God's image and likeness. It is our American heritage, our cherished freedom, our most cherished freedom. And if we are not free in our conscience, in our practice of religion, then all the other freedoms that have been afforded to us become very fragile. If our obligations and duties to God are impeded or even worse, contradicted by the government, then we can no longer claim to be the land of the free. This is what we are fighting for today. You know, today we celebrate the memorial of the martyrs, Saints Thomas More and John Fisher. They are both renowned Englishmen who were martyred within two weeks of each other for the same cause of defending religious liberty the sanctity of marriage and papal authority over, the, over church across national borders. They laid down their lives rather than violate their consciences or their sacred principles. Their courageous witness of faith continues to stir our minds and hearts, the minds and hearts of people yearning for authentic freedom and specifically religious freedom. We do well to speak of St. Thomas More and St. John Fisher in the same breath because they demonstrate how together laity and clergy, each according to their specific vocations, <clears throat> can and must defend, can and must defend and foster 
religious freedom. They also demonstrate two kinds of religious freedom that need to be defended. The right of individuals to form their consciences and the right of church institutions to fulfill their missions without undue interference on the part of the state. <clears throat> when we look at their lives, they both took their cross for, for Jesus' sake, took up their cross for Jesus' sake, and they followed him to their deaths. Whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. They found their life in Christ Jesus. You know, Thomas More, when he was called upon by King Henry VIII to disregard the church's teaching on marriage and to betray his principles and his conscience, he refused to do so. <clears throat> Instead, he put everything at risk, including his own life. He accepted his martyrdom courageously. So Thomas More teaches us how laypersons are to form their consciences so as to bear witness to the truth in the midst of civic and professional responsibilities. And then as a priest, St. John Fisher, he demonstrates how pastors of the church must, in the course of their ministry, bear courageous witness to the truth. St. John Fisher also found himself at odds with King Henry VIII and with the laws that required him to take an oath repudiating papal authority and acknowledging the king as head of the church. He refused to stand against truth, so he accepted his martyrdom courageously. So friends, inspired by St. Thomas More and St. John Fisher, let us be renewed in our own resolve to defend both the religious freedom of individuals and the religious freedom of church institutions, for the two are inseparably linked. If we fail to defend the rights of individuals, the freedom of institutions will be at risk. And if we fail to defend the rights of our institutions, then individual liberty will be at risk. So each day during this Religious Freedom Week, there'll be a reflection of some kind for us from the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops which relate to some aspect or some issue regarding religious freedom. So in our reflection today, you and I, we are asked to pray that governments would respect the consciences of the little sisters of the poor and all Christians who care for the sick and the vulnerable. You know, for centuries, the church has carried on the healing ministry of Christ by building institutions dedicated to medicine and accompanying of the, among, accompaniment of the dying. And indeed, the church invented the hospitals as we know it. So today, orders like the Little Sisters of the Poor, they serve elderly, low-income Americans of all backgrounds. But the Little Sisters' work is at risk because of lawsuits brought by the states of California and Pennsylvania against the expanded religious and moral exemption to the Health and Human Services mandate to provide contraception to their employees as part of their benefits. And so hospitals are constantly defending themselves against these lawsuits and government orders that try to force them to participate in these harmful procedures such as sterilization, gender reassignment, surgery, and even abortion. It is unthinkable that we would undermine our mission to heal by destroying innocent life and harming the persons for whom we are called to free or to called to care for. This is just one thing that's going on that's in a, a base to Christian uh, religious liberty in our country today. So if you want to take action, take action to support religious liberty. Text the word freedom. You probably won't remember this number, but you can go on the USCCB website and do it that way to receive updates and action alerts. Text the word freedom to 84576, 84576.